VR on steroids. That is the best short way to describe this movie, Ready Player One. Yep, that is literally the name of the movie, Ready Player One. By looking at the trailers, I thought that Ready Player One was just a saying for this movie, and I thought it was actually called The Oasis. I thought that Ready Player One was just a, uh, a saying for this movie, just the same way that um, when in space, nobody can hear you scream, like in the Alien movie, and whoever wins, we lose the saying for Aliens vs. Predator. But no, Ready Player One is the actual name of this movie. Hi, I just uh, wanted to give my um, my quick thoughts on this movie, although it probably won't be so quick. But uh, yeah, I wanted to do sort of like an unedited, unscripted movie review of this. I just got off of um, I just uh, got off uh, tonight from watching Ready Player One with my little brother, and I gotta say right off the bat, it's good. It's uh, it's pretty good. Like it's nothing phenomenal. It's just mostly a whole bunch of uh, CG eye candy and mindless fun and action. It's basically what it is. I mean, it's kind of in the same way that Valerian is, if any of you ever saw Valerian. Um, but it doesn't... It doesn't try as hard. In my opinion, at least. Um... Uh, by the way, th there is going to probably be spoilers in this review, so if any of you have not watched the movie yet, I recommend that you do watch it. I mean, it's at least worth one watch, and so um, I'll wait for you to uh, watch it first before I continue on. Okay, seeing the movie now? Well, good. Well, now, on with the review. Ready Player One. VR on steroids. So if you haven't seen like the uh, storyline and trailers for this movie, basically it's a movie of where that everybody um, is like in a shitty ass uh, kind of borderline apocalyptic uh, world where everybody, um, or I guess there is like a shortage on some certain supplies that like uh, brings out the pleasures in life in the real world. And so everybody, as a resort to get away from the shitty ass real world, they go to this uh, virtual reality called the Oasis, of where that it's basically an entirely new universe of different worlds that you could visit. Um, like the worlds that they showed, I'll actually get to that in a minute. But um, yeah, it's a massive multiplayer online role playing game, basically. Um, except there's. Except it's uh, more immersive than just playing on a freaking computer, you know? Um, so, the cons of this movie. Um, first of all, I think that the love relationship between Sam and... Um, uh, Sam is the main girl, by the way. And what was the dude's name? Oh, yeah, Wade. The love relationship between Wade and Sam... I did not feel any that good a chemistry between them. I mean, it's nothing phenomenal. Like, um, for example, what's one other love relationship that I could say that had a good amount of chemistry? I mean, uh, Lord of the Rings, for example. Aragorn and Arwen, I mean, there wasn't... There was more chemistry with that. I mean, that's not probably not the pinnacle example of a, uh, of a, a cinema love relationship having a whole lot of chemistry. But still, I mean, compare Wade and Sam to um, Aragorn and Arwen from Lord of the Rings. But at the same time, compare Sam and Wade to Valerian and whoever that other chick was from the movie Valerian. Um, yeah. If, if you've ever seen Valerian, you'll know what I'm talking about. But the main problem, I think, with uh, Valerian... Um, the main re love relationship on that one is that they tried too hard. With this movie, with Ready Player One, they at least did not try super hard with this love relationship. And so that makes it more forgivable. I mean, y you don't expect a whole lot, but you don't get a whole lot at the same time, so it's more forgivable. But with Valerian, they kind of build it up and they're trying so hard, and so they make it so that you try to expect a lot... But then you get very, very little. So the love relationship uh, in Valerian is um, not as forgivable. Let's put it that way. Um, 
The two Asian boys, like, um, th there was some other side characters in Ready Player One, like the two Asian boys, they were not as well developed as I thought they should have been. Um, barely any arc, barely any storyline of their background at all, like, they were just bland characters, like, they were just, they were just there, they are just he there to help them fight th in their adventures, uh, Sam and Wade's adventures. Um... Uh, and the villain, the villain as well, was pretty cliched. Like the typical evil corporate exec that wants to um, take over, uh, like um, take over the entire monopoly of the industry that is the Oasis. By the way, uh, in the Oasis, there is this guy. Um, I forgot to mention this part of the storyline. Um, there's this one guy called Jim Halloway, I think that's his name, who created the Oasis. He is the top CEO and owner of the Oasis and the corporation that runs that uh, simulator, but he dies. And so there is somebody who has to find an Easter egg in the Oasis to inherit his, uh, his corporation. And so that's the goal of Wade, basically, in this movie. And so, the main bad guy, which, um, cannot remember what his name was, um, Nolan, that was his first name. Nolan Sorrento, that was his name. Nolan Sorrento was just basically the typical, uh, corporate, uh, evil corporate exec that just looks for more power and money and so forth. There's nothing super unique, there's nothing entertainingly megalomaniacal with him. I mean, he was pretty much just about as bland, not quite as bland, but almost about as bland as the two Asian boys that I had uh, mentioned, the two Asian uh, side characters that I mentioned a little earlier. Um, another bad thing with this movie is that the action, although at times it was flashy and badass to look at, it, it a lot of the times looked like a big CG mess. Uh, some of the times. I mean, especially when you had large groups fighting each other or large groups participating in action. Like when the action was like one, focusing on just one person versus one person, it seemed more focused. I mean, you compare, you compare it to something like a Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Like, for example, the Rohirrim charging against the orcs. Like, you can really get on the edge of your seat and invested and know of what was happening. But, I mean, uh, you, you had uh, Calvary getting stomped by the Mumma Kill in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, and so on and so forth. But you, you couldn't hardly make out of what was going on with these large group battles in this movie, Ready Player One. But when it was focusing one character on one character, like, for example, um, again, spoilers, um, H, which is one of the side characters, uh, she turns into the... Uh, uh, she, he, whatever. Uh, she turns into the Iron Giant in the Oasis and fights Mecha Godzilla. When it focuses on that, it seems when it's we, when we see those just those two fighting each other, it seems focused. Um, and when you have a uh, Nolan Sorrento in the Oasis fighting against Wade, um, which is uh, name in the Oasis is Z, by the way. When you see them two fighting, it seems fairly focused as well. Another big con about this movie is that it pulls the same thing that Valerian did. Um, and that was, it introduced us to all these neat looking environments that we would like to see more to, but ultimately it does not. Like, for example, in Valerian, you get introduced to, um, this giant sea world, kind of, and this giant uh, urban megaplex that is within the the uh, space station, the um, the space station of a uh, thousand planets. Uh, I cannot remember what the official name of it was, but you know what I'm talking about. And it talks about the um, this farming area, and uh, I cannot remember what it was, but you know what I'm talking about. It's introducing us to all these different environments that are neat looking and that we would like to see more, but ultimately we do not get enough. I mean, especially the urban megaplex, we don't see a whole lot of. We see a little bit of the sea world, but not a whole lot of it, when we would have liked to see more. And so it kind of falls flat in that area. And it's the same thing with Ready Player One. We get introduced to this one world of where that you can snow ski 
down the Egyptian pyramids. I shit you not, guys. I, I mean, and there, you could, e um, excuse me, you could, um, go mountain climbing up Mount Everest with Batman, is the way that they put, put it. Um, you could also go surfing in, like, this tropical paradise area, and it just sets up all these different worlds and environments. And y you think, y you go thinking that, oh, we are going to get some big traveling adventure where we are going to see the uh, main characters go through all these different worlds. But no, that's not the case. We do not uh, see them go through all these worlds. Let's see, what are all the different environments that they go to? There is, like, this race area, which I thought was pretty badass. Um, they just, uh, participate in kind of this, uh, this hyped up Fast and Furious style of race where they're just racing through the city trying to, um, pass through a Tyrannosaurus Rex. A freaking Tyrannosaurus Rex. And all these wrecking balls that are swinging at the racers as well, trying to destroy them. And King Kong. Th this part was badass. But, um, obviously we are not in the city for the sake of the environment. We're just uh, here to watch shit get blown up and watch the characters race. That's about it. Um, there's this one scene when we see them go to a party area, which was all dark and gloomy. I mean, uh, most of the environments that we do see that the these characters go into in Ready Player One is dark and gloomy. A whole lot of them are. The inside of the corporate buildings, dark and gloomy. Um, the inside of, um, the Halloway Journal, uh, what was the name of this one building inside the Oasis that is basically supposed to be Jim Halloway's memory, um, dark and gloomy, and also the Do Planet Doom, that, there's this one planet called the Planet Doom, which we see a lot where they just battle shit out, dark and gloomy. We do not... There's so much potential. The thing is that there's so much potential with this concept of this whole idea of an entire virtual universe that you could go to on the VR, on basically a VR headset, but that potential is not tapped. Um, we do not see them go through beautiful forests and beautiful mountains and all these areas of floating islands. I mean, the, the potential of all this is limitless. And also, it, it makes me go to think. There, one of the side characters named H fixes up and builds vehicles. Even built the Star, the Battlestar Galactica from, well, Battlestar Galactica. Whole bunch of spaceships. And the Millennium Falcon also gets mentioned in there. And we don't get to see any of star travel in this show at all. Like, like uh, you go, they go setting it up and you almost go thinking that, oh, maybe there's going to be space battles. But no, that's not the case. I mean, maybe they did not... I can understand them not wanting to have the characters fly the Millennium Falcon and the Battlestar Galactica because maybe that would be getting too far into copyright infringement and so forth. But could have still had some um, uniquely designed starships specifically for this movie. But, again, potential wasted. There's so much potential with this movie, like clocking in at two hours and ten minutes and none of this shit happens. Um, another problem that I have with this movie, uh, I cannot remember what exactly was one of the flaws I was going to mention, but another flaw with this movie was the pacing. Like, it starts off all big and flashy, the movie does, and explosive. But then, as we get later and later into the movie, the pacing really slows down. The scale of the plot and so forth gets progressively smaller and smaller. Everything tones down. The action slows down and all that. And um, we get a movie, ultimately, in its pacing and scale and everything that started off as a big explosion, but then ends off with a little put. A little whiff of a candle. It just gets progressively more... I won't say boring, that might be too harsh of a word, but it gets more into a kind of thought-provoking attitude, which I guess is a good way for me to transition into the pros of this movie. The, the pros is that it kind of gets you to thinking of how humanity is wasting its time playing games constantly. I mean, 
I, I can tell this from experience because a lot of my earlier childhood, I played a whole lot on Windows 98 playing uh, Command and Conquer and Age of Empires and so on and so forth. And now I play a whole lot of uh, Minecraft and so on and so forth. Oh, and also, by the way, there's a world of where there's a uh, Minecraft in Ready Player One. I can totally understand them not wanting to go to that world because it would have been just totally cheesy and they probably would have got way more into copyright infringement territory. Who knows? Um... But, yeah, and also, again, spoiler alert, um, when Wade... I, I mean, at this point, I probably don't need to repeat it. I'm already... I've already far gotten into spoiler territory. Um... Wade, when he is given the Easter egg to inherit the property of the entire corporation and the Oasis, he there's like a big red button that he can access of where he can shut down the entire Oasis. And you kind of get the you kind of get the thought that maybe at the end of at the bare end of the movie that he'll just ultimately shut down the entire Oasis because he comes to the full realization that yeah, video games are a waste of time. Click, Oasis shut down, everybody is disappointed, but at the total end of thing, things, Wade himself and all of humanity gets learned an important lesson, and that is we should not surround our lives completely to virtual, rea to virtual reality and to video games altogether. That we should uh, attach our, our heads more to the real world. Um... Another good thing about this movie, I mean, th there was a couple of side characters, at least. I mean, I already mentioned of how the Asian kids were, were not all that well developed. And the two main characters, Sam and Wade, I said that their love relationship did not have a whole lot of chemistry that really interested me. But they're still fair characters. I mean, they're average. They're averagely developed. I mean, um, Wade, he is like... um living under his aunt and an abusive boyfriend of this aunt or fiance or whatever and uh, he his parents had died i mean it's kind of stereotypical same old same old um wade is just basically the um the stereotypical um young white boy who is wide-eyed and curious about the world and looks to be more tap into more of his potential and so on and so forth and as the trailers kind of uh as the trailers kind of show sam who is the main girl like i keep on saying um is part of some resistance cell i mean we've seen this in a whole lot of other movies you know main male uh character gets uh dragged into an adventure that is bigger than what he thought it could have been uh, by the main female character who he ultimately falls in love and basically Sam falls under that character drags Wade into a resistance to fight the bad guys and fight the good cause um y y yeah just stereotypical average um but the couple of characters that I will say were pretty good was H which is like um, set up as kind of Wade's buddy, best friend, like right off the bat, just, uh, set up as his best friend and so on and so forth. And at first you think that H is a dude, um, because, <sighs> because he, she, <laughs> she plays as a male avatar in the Oasis, is this big burly meat head, meat head, um, but then ultimately later on we find out that the real person that is behind H is actually a gal named Ellen who isn't that pretty girl I'm going to be honest uh, sorry but yeah still uh but despite all of that was still still had like the most personality in my opinion like she was pretty much playing the part of the big bulky lovable meathead that had uh that had attitude, but they change it up a little bit by um, having him uh, as a girl instead, ultimately. And there is a, another character who is just a minion of, um, oh, 
man, I forgot his name. He was the main villain's minion. The the guy's name was Irock. I mean, the the name is cooler than the design of the character. I mean, the design of his physical design was all right, but it wasn't as cool as I thought his name was, like Irock. And when we first get introduced to this guy, we at first thought that he was going to be like this super intimidating villain, but ultimately he comes off as kind of uh, quirky and socially awkward, like I can be at times. Like I, uh, I I'm basically just a a big wannabe myself. I mean, I try to be edgy and intimidating with the glasses and the pea coat and whatnot, but. Ultimately, I'm just a socially awkward dweeb, and that's kind of the same thing that you get with Irock. And so, because of his, his social awkwardness and goofiness, you go to this the party scene, and he meets these three hooker ladies. And so, you think that at first, with this guy's personality, that ultimately we are going to see him start mingling with the girls. But no. He ultimately leans forward to them and he says, Get out. So, with that line, you know that this guy means uh, means business. That he means serious business. I mean, he, he's still goofball a bit. And uh, he still has those moments of awkwardness. But he still means business. Setting up that, despite his, his, the goofy laughs that he might provide... Is still a serious character not to be trifled with by the main good guys that we are dealing with. Um, what's some other good things I thought about this movie? Uh, I think I'm uh, running low on them. I, I mean, the movie all in all did look good, and it, it was fun to watch the the car ch the car race scenes. And the big battle at the end was ultimately, despite all of it looking like a big jumble mess, was still pretty to watch. And the worlds, the designs of the worlds was still cool. And the concept of a virtual reality, despite um, us thinking about, despite it getting you to think of what will be the negative consequences of such a thing, is still a, a good concept. Like, escaping into a new virtual reality. Like, it will... It'll, in a way, help with your depression. Oh, and that's another thing. Is the way that it shows of how people at the same time can get super stupidly addicted to this thing. Like, at one moment, we see somebody almost commit suicide because he died in the Oasis. He lost all his shit, his money, and whatnot in the game. And... Ultimately, he wants to commit suicide, but then he gets stopped by his own fellow co-worker. Um, and the abusive fiancé that I mentioned earlier, that is Wade's aunt's fiancé, he, he plays the game a whole lot himself as well. And uh, he goes to show as to how negatively consequential the Oasis can be. Like, he's so addicted to the game that he is willing to... Mm, excuse me. To practically kill over this game. He goes assaulting Wade over the fact that Wade basically screwed him over. Over a fucking game. <laughs> that goes to show how addicting it is. And he get, um, the fiance does anyway, gets so invested into this game to the point that he devotes all of the household funds into buying new equipment and so forth so that he could, like, eventually win prize money. Like, gambling all of his, uh, household savings just so that he could win this game. Or at least win some prize from the game. So, what do I have to say about Ready Player One? Ultimately, it's nothing phenomenal. It's nothing revolutionary. It is directed by Steven Spielberg, who uh, people would say that he has directed better things. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Steven Spielberg. I mean, there might have been a time that I liked Jurassic Park, but now when I go to thinking back on it, I'm not that big a fan. I barely remember E.T. I never watched Encounter of the Third Kind. The only um, franchise I could really say that I like of his or that he at least co-directed would be Indiana Jones, co-directed with uh, George Lucas, you know. 
Um, and so for a movie like this, despite it being visually pleasing, is ultimately the content, the overall plot of it is kind of low. Some low standards, I would say, especially for a um, legendary director that is Steven Spielberg that gained the respect of so many people, uh, particularly around America, but maybe even around the world. So what would I say about this movie? What would I rate it? I would say like either a 6 or a 7 out of 10. I'll say 6 out of 10, at least. Um... Yeah, that's all that I have to say about this movie. Hope you guys uh, like this review. Uh, comment down below if you think that I should do more reviews like this. And if I, I should like a better script, <laughs> come with a script this time. Uh, or next time, I mean. And so on and so forth. But, um, yeah, go see the movie for yourself. It's pretty good if you haven't already. And uh, if you have seen the movie and you're watching this review, tell me of uh, how much you agree with my analysis of it all. Um, so anyway, that's all I have to say. I'm Zach the Dark Conservatarian. This has been my review of Ready Player One. I'll see you later. God bless.